Let's take a deeper look into recording audio. Load up the example project, Recording Audio 2. In the previous chapter, we recorded guitar. See how the guitar audio file was named? Cubase took the name of our track, Guitar Solo, and placed an underscore after it with the numbers 01. This is why we name the track before we start recording. Now let's punch in and out super fast and see what it does with the naming. Let's put the record enable button on, but not the monitor. This way we don't have to hear what we are recording since we are really recording nothing for this example. Press play first and then press the record button multiple times so that we create separate guitar recordings. Don't worry, this isn't the punch in and out tutorial. We'll go more in depth on that topic of punching in in level two of this DVD series. Let's zoom in on these newly recorded parts by clicking once on the ruler and moving down with the mouse. The last two numbers in the audio file name are changing. This will continue to increment as you record more. Now that you know this, you won't be confused by Cubase's naming. There's one exception to this naming rule. In the preferences window, click on editing. You'll see an option called parts get track names. If this is activated and you move an event from one track to another, the moved event will automatically be named according to its new track. Otherwise, the event will retain the name of the track it was previously on. This works perfectly for MIDI parts, but you need to know something about audio events and parts. Make sure you see the important chapter called Events and Parts and the Sample Editor in DVD 2 of this series for a super clear explanation. Basically, an audio event is a piece of audio like this drum loop. When I move it from track to track, with the Parts Get Track Names option turned on, the audio file does not change name. But if this audio file were a part, let's choose Events to Part from the Audio menu, then the audio part's name changes. The audio event is in this audio part, and it's the part name that changes, not the event name. You may not like the name that was recorded, or you might plan to change the names of the files for better description. Make sure the event info line is showing by pressing this button here. If you see the words no object selected, make sure you click on the audio event you wish to change. Now we can see lots of information about the audio file in the event info line. You are able to change the name of the audio file directly on the hard disk in this spot. Be careful when naming files and don't forget to save the project right away. This is to make sure that the Cubase project saves and knows about the audio file name change you've just done. If you cut the audio file in half with the split tool, you'll see that the description for both cuts are the same. Let's change the description for the first one and now the second one. Using the description is helpful if you have an audio file and you are using different pieces or cuts of it along your timeline. Just another handy feature to allow your work to be more descriptive. You now have a better idea of how Cubase names and manages its recorded audio files. File management is 90% of the battle when recording in audio programs. Just a small note, when I cut the audio file in half, the audio file in the hard drive was unaffected. Cubase simply reads the audio file from the hard drive and then stops reading it. It then continues reading in the middle of the file and then stops again. So don't worry about cutting, copying, and racing like crazy on the project page. Last but not least, let's talk about monitoring. There are different ways to monitor the incoming signal in Cubase. Go to the Preferences window and click on VST. Then select the pop-up menu beside Auto Monitoring. When we recorded guitar in the last chapter, we recorded in manual monitoring mode. This means that we get to choose when to hear the incoming signal at any time, either while Cubase is recording, playing back, or when stopped. While record enabled is exactly like it says. Whenever you press the record enable button on the track, the monitor button turns on too. While record running means that if you press the record button on the transport, the monitor button will come on for the track that has the record enable button on. And tape machine style is a popular one. This emulates standard tape machines. Input monitoring in stop mode and during recording but not during playback. 
So when you play back, you hear what is on the track. But when you stop or record, you hear the instrument coming in the inputs of your audio card. This is perfect for a vocalist recording overdubs. All right, so those are the basics concerning recording audio. Now let's look at looping.